Hello, my name is Amy Miles. Today I'll be presenting work from my postdoctoral fellowship with Dr. Yulia Nikolova at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto, Canada. Thanks for tuning in. Major depressive disorder or depression is a common and debilitating psychiatric illness characterized by low mood and anhedonia. It has a lifetime prevalence of up to 17% and it constitutes the leading cause of disability worldwide. Although depression is moderately heritable, it is highly polygenic and its biological basis remains poorly understood. Until recently, attempts to disentangle the heritable component of depression have focused largely on variations in gene structure. However, several years ago, a collaborating group used a complementary approach to meta-analyze depression-related changes in gene expression or activity. As part of this study, the authors meta-analyzed transcriptomic data from eight postmortem cohorts including 51 depression cases and 50 matched controls. They compared tissue-specific expression in three regions, the DLPFC, the subgenual ACC, and the amygdala, and they observed consistently altered expression of 566 genes, 56% of which were downregulated in the depression cases. As you can see on the right, pathway analysis revealed significant associations with biological functions related to cell death and survival and cell-to-cell -cell signaling, and with other major mental illnesses and brain disorders. Uh, and it's also worth noting here that there was significant overlap with genes near GWAS hits for neuropsychiatric disorders and aging. So in order to facilitate translation of these findings into living people, our group developed a novel transcriptome-based polygenic risk score, or TPRS, that captures variants partially mimicking this transcriptomic signature. In order to compute TPRS, we need to be able to impute cortical gene expression. And PredictScan is a tool that allows us to do this. It uses peripheral SNP data and a reference transcriptome, to estimate the component of gene expression that is genetically regulated. Imputation is based on observed variation in SISI-QTLs, which are proximal genomic loci that account for variation in transcript abundance. And the relative contribution of each SISI-QTL is determined based on its weighting in a tissue-specific prediction model, uh, which is fitted using genotype and gene expression data from reference transcriptome studies. So the aim of this particular study was to explore how depression-associated transcriptomic changes might translate to differences in in vivo measures of brain structure and to depression-associated cognitive phenotypes. In order to do this, we computed TPRS as described using PredictScan and GTEx version 7 Cortex as the reference transcriptome. Using this method, uh, we were able to reliably impute cortical expression of 36 depression-associated genes. And we did this in a sample of 299 unrelated, non-Hispanic white young adult participants in the Human Connectome Project. In our primary analysis, we tested mean effects of TPRS on subcortical volume, cortical thickness, and cortical surface area in free surfer atlas-based regions. And we examined each of these brain-based phenotypes separately because they have distinct genetic origins and developmental trajectories. And we also averaged uh, values over hemisphere in order to reduce the number of comparisons. In a follow-up analysis, we tested associations between volume, thickness, or surface area in TPRS-associated regions and measures of fluid cognition including executive function, attention, working memory, episodic memory, and processing speed. Uh, and these were assessed with the NIH toolbox cognition battery. And we selected these particular measures for consideration because deficits therein have been reported in depression and because variation therein has been reported in healthy controls. So more specifically, we used separate linear regressions to test main effects of TPRS on free surfer derived structural measures, namely volume in seven subcortical regions and thickness and surface area in 34 cortical regions. And we included sex, age, and intracranial volume as, a, uh, excuse me, as covariates where appropriate. We also used separate linear regressions to test associations between volume, thickness, or surface area in TPRS-associated regions 
and each of the five measures of fluid cognition that I previously mentioned. In both primary and secondary analyses, we applied FDR correction to account for repeated testing. So what did we find? Uh, we did not identify a significant main effect of TPRS on cortical thickness. We did, however, identify significant main effects of TPRS on volume in the nucleus accumbens and surface area in the caudal middle frontal cortex and in the cuneus. And as you can see here, in each case, higher TPRS, which indicates more depression-like gene expression, was associated with lower volume or surface area. And post-hoc analyses confirmed effects in both left and right hemispheres. We also observe significant brain behavior associations whereby lower volume or surface area was associated with poor performance on a working memory task. So in summary, we found that higher TPRS indicating more depression like gene expression was associated with lower site specific volume or surface area, which in turn was associated with poorer working memory. And these findings are at least partially consistent with previous imaging studies in depression. So for example, lifetime depression diagnosis was associated with lower nucleus accumbens volume in a relatively large community sample. And adolescent depression uh, diagnosis was associated with a lower medial occipital surface area in a large scale meta-analysis from the Enigma MDD consortium. Our findings are also consistent with evidence of a negative association between nucleus accumbens volume and lethality of suicide attempt in patients with mood disorders who attempted suicide. Um, and this is particularly interesting and noteworthy given the high rates of suicide in the original postmortem sample. And finally, our results are consistent with a recent paper in which it is suggested that variations in cortical surface area which unlike cortical thickness is genetically linked with depression, could reflect pre-existing risk factors for depression and could contribute to poor outcomes. So in the process of conducting the study, we identified two major limitations. First, sample size was small due to family structure. So as you can see here, the average participant in HCP has at least one sibling who is also enrolled in the study. We know that TPRS and brain structure are likely more similar in siblings than in unrelated individuals. And um, given that we wanted to avoid this potential source of bias, we excluded from our sample all but the first participant from each family. Naturally, when we did this, our sample size decreased quite significantly. Second, we ended up excluding additional genes based on poor convergence between SNPs included in the prediction model and SNPs captured by the genotyping platform used to analyze the HCP data. So although we were able to impute cortical expression of 88 depression-associated genes, we ultimately computed TPRS using the 36 genes in which the imputation pipeline performed the best. And it's worth noting here that we never expected to impute expression of all 566 depression-associated genes, and that's because PredictScan works best for genes whose expression is highly genetically regulated, which is certainly not always the case. So in order to address these limitations, we sought to replicate our findings in the Duke Neurogenetics study. Uh, as you can see, this included a larger sample with 478 subjects, all of whom were non-Hispanic white and university aged. In this case, we were able to impute cortical expression of 76 depression-associated genes uh, using excuse me, using predict scan and the same reference transcriptome. And we used largely the same approach as in the previous analysis. Uh, however, there were several notable exceptions. First, we decided to test main effects of TPRS on cortical phenotypes using a vertex-wise approach because it has a superior spatial resolution. Second, we added an analysis testing main effects of TPRS on local gyrification which is a neurodevelopmental phenotype that is correlated with surface area. Third, we tested associations between morphology in TPRS-associated regions and executive function, quantified using response time adjusted for error rate on the TRAILS B task. And fourth, we controlled for ethnic heterogeneity by covarying for a single MDS component 
that accounted for almost 50% of the variance in our sample. We also sought to confirm our previous findings, so we retested main effects of TPRS on surface area in the cuneus and caudal middle frontal parcellations. So again, as in the previous analysis, we detected a significant main effect of TPRS on nucleus accumbens volume, uh, but this effect did not survive correction for multiple comparisons. Moreover, we did not replicate the previously observed effects of TPRS on cuneus or caudal middle frontal surface area, nor did we detect a significant main effect of TPRS on vertex-wise cortical surface area. We did, however, detect significant main effects of TPRS on vertex-wise local gyrification, um, a phenotype uh, which, as I mentioned, is correlated with surface area in five clusters with peak vertices in the left rostral middle frontal cortex, left superior frontal cortex, right caudal middle frontal cortex, right lateral occipital cortex, and right isthmus cingulate cortex. And in each case, higher TPRS, indicating more depression-like gene expression, was associated with less gyrification in these regions. We also detected um, significant main effects of TPRS on cortical thickness in one cluster whose peak vertex was in the right lingual gyrus. Uh, and unlike in the previous case, in this case, higher TPRS was associated with greater thickness. In almost all cases, these regions partially overlapped or abutted regions detected in the previous analysis. So for example, higher TPRS was associated with greater thickness and less gyrification in right occipital regions in the current analysis and with lower cuneus surface area in the previous analysis. Likewise, higher TPRS was associated with less gyrification in bilateral frontal regions in the current analysis and with lower caudal middle frontal surface area in the previous analysis. So again, morphology and TPRS associated regions was a significant or trend level predictor of cognitive performance. In this case, greater thickness in the occipital cluster and less gyrification in the caudal middle frontal and isthmus cingulate clusters were associated with longer response time on the trails B task. And again, direction of effect was consistent with that of TPRS. So in other words, higher TPRS was linked to greater thickness and less gyrification in certain regions, and greater thickness and less gyrification in these regions uh, was linked to poor executive function. So in summary, we again found evidence of a link between depression-like gene expression and site-specific variations in cortical surface architecture that could contribute to poor cognitive function reminiscent of that seen in depression. And again, our findings are at least partially consistent with previous imaging studies in depression, uh, most notably with evidence of hypogyrification in occipital and frontal regions in a small sample of female patients compared to matched controls. Um, given that we know gyrification emerges early and its patterning remains relatively stable across the lifespan, uh, observed variations in gyrification could reflect atypical neurodevelopment that contributes to disease susceptibility. On the flip side, our findings also complement those from a study in which bipolar patients and controls were imaged at two time points in their 40s. And the authors of this study reported abnormal increases in thickness in the medial occipital cortex in the bipolar patients. And they noted a significant association uh, highlighted here between the magnitude of change in thickness and genetic risk for bipolar disorder, at least some of which is shared with depression. So together, these findings suggest to me that genetic vulnerability to mood disorders more generally might contribute to variations in thickness that could reflect abnormal aging, uh, which is particularly noteworthy given the overlap between genes in TPRS and GWAS hits for aging. Broadly speaking, uh, future work should explore these putative relationships between TPRS and developmental and aging related changes in brain structure. And ideally that would occur in the context of a prospective study. Uh, for the time being, however, our group is focused on extending the characterization of TPRS by examining its effects on resting state functional connectivity and on replicating our findings in an independent sample. I'd like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Yulia Nikolova, for her mentorship, 
the Human Connectome Project and the Duke Neurogenetics Study for providing access to their data and the CAMH Discovery Fund for supporting this work. Uh, of course, I'd also like to thank the frontline workers who are keeping us safe and stocked right now. And I look forward to seeing everyone in San Diego next year. Thank you very much. <laughs>